Did you know that the obstacles that you face are meant to promote you? They're meant to elevate you. We're going to talk about this today and I want to just give you a little preface that this message may sound non-encouraging initially, but it is encouraging and look at it as a whole. <laughs> so I just wanted to preface that before we get into it. Here's the thing is that when God is trying to promote you, sometimes it may feel like all hell comes against you. Sometimes it might feel like you're having trouble with your kids or your marriage or your job or your finances or your health. Maybe you got some sort of diagnosis and it feels like, gosh, when am I ever going to get to that thing I'm believing God for, right? But the thing about it is every obstacle or stone that is thrown at you to try and hinder you or get you off the path is really meant to promote you. If, if we can think of it like this, okay, this has been between God and I, we've been having our quiet time and I've, and you know, I get in my little pity parties, I do, where I say, well, God, why isn't this happening? And, you know, and I start talking about the problem instead of the solution. And I heard God say, stop complaining, Randy. <laughs> you know, there's nothing greater than an honest friend who will tell you like it is. And God is like that. <laughs> I hope you have friends that are like that. But during this struggle over these last, I don't know, a couple, three, four weeks, maybe a month or so, I've been really just you know, fighting this thing in my spirit and kind of talking it over and hashing it out with God. And he reminded me of the story of Joseph and how Joseph's life was not perfect, but it was all with a purpose. And so I want to encourage you with the story of Joseph in the beginning where we know from a very early age, Joseph was called by God. And Romans 11.29 tells us that God's call is without repentance. So sometimes, like we talked about maybe last week or so, that, you know, if you get that prophetic word, it might not come to pass right away. It may take years. It may be like 40 years, 10 years, a month. I don't know. Whatever God's timing is, it's perfect. But we can look at Joseph's life and know that he was called from a very early age. And we saw his brothers hated him because of it. Oh, the dreamer, they made fun of him. And, you know, his father gave him the coat of many colors because he knew the call that was on his life. And I believe his father favored him. And the brothers hated him even more so because of his father's favor towards Joseph. But listen to this. If while we go through this whole message today, keep it in the forefront or in the back of your mind um, the fact that no matter what was happening to Joseph he was called from the very beginning so we go on to see that in Genesis 37 Joseph was rejected by his family his brothers hated him they sold him into slavery they wanted a lot of the brothers wanted him dead there was only that one brother that was like let's not kill him he's our brother for Pete's sake you know and, and then we saw in Genesis 39 Joseph was tempted by Potiphar's wife and even though he was ruler over Potiphar's wife and Potiphar trusted him with everything when things seem to be going good or well or you know kind of in an upward trajectory you have to be cautious and careful because there's always going to be a Potiphar's wife because the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He wants to tarnish your witness. He wants to tarnish your testimony and let people look at your life and say, well, look at their, they're struggling with this sin and that sin and whatever. They can't get the victory in their life. And so it doesn't give God the glory. It gives Satan glory. And we don't want to live like that. See, that's what was happening when the devil sent Potiphar's wife to try and trip Joseph up. 
But you see what happened in that story. He remained faithful and pure to God. And then we see, <laughs> moving on to Genesis 39, this is where Joseph still used his God-given gifts. And he's letting his light shine for God, even though all hell seems to be coming against him. He's still interpreting the dreams. He's still using the gifts that God has given him. And God wants us to do the same. Then we see in Genesis 41 how God promoted Joseph. He was promoted. He ended up being the answer to the famine in the land. And, and this part here, I'm about to tell you, to me this is God's sense of humor, but you can look at it however you want. The people, God, God's message through this whole thing was that the people that came against Joseph, his very own family, his brothers, who threw him into slavery, who made fun of him, and oh, the dreamer, this and that, they came to him begging for food later when there was a famine in the land. And Joseph was in such a high promoted place of authority. He had been given power by God. And so it's basically the you know the scripture that says that God will cause even your enemies to be at peace with you. Okay, his brothers were his enemies at one point because they were so jealous of him that they tried to hold him down. But let me tell you this, no matter who comes against you, no matter who tries to hold you down, God will do the same for you. He will use you to heal a land. I mean, you see the story of Joseph where he, he, he was even the one who relieved the poverty in Egypt. God used him in such a mighty, powerful way that people that had hurt him and betrayed him and tried to hold him down before they came begging for help from him. And God will do the same for you. So through this whole message, I just, I don't want you to make excuses for why you're not living your life. Why aren't you using the gifts God's given you? Because his call is without repentance. But here's the thing I've learned about people over the years is that if they believe in something, they're going to make a way. But if they don't, they will make an excuse. So stop making excuses for not chasing the dream, not writing the book, not, you know, leading the group, not starting the ministry, whatever it is that you know God has called you to do. Stop making the excuse and let your light shine even through just like Joseph did. He still used the gift of interpreting dreams that God gave him when he was young. While he was in prison, he used this gift while he's in prison. God's call is without repentance. That means he's never going to take it back. If he's called you to be a pastor, he's never going to take it back. If he's called you to lead a group, he's never going to take it back. If he's called you to have some sort of apostolic church planting, whatever it is. If he's called you to lead a high school group of kids to the, to the gospel of Jesus Christ, his call is without repentance. You know who gets in the way of God's call on our lives? Us. You know, many years ago, when God put a call on my life into ministry, and I was coming out of drugs and drinking and smoking, one of the greatest lessons I learned back then that helped put me on an upward trajectory was that every time I looked in the mirror and I saw my cute little self, <laughs> I am accountable for my own actions. No one owes me anything. No one has, I'm not entitled to anything and no one's supposed to help me get off of drugs. I can't blame my mom, blame my dad, blame everyone in my family. I can't blame the economy, blame the president, blame the Republicans, blame, blame whatever. I was born into a poor family, da, da, you name it. It goes on and on and on. At the end of the day, you 
are accountable for your life and the gifts that God has given you. Use them now for the glory of God's name. And if you're watching this video, you don't know God yet. You can know him as Lord and Savior. All you have to do is invite him into your heart. Say, Jesus Christ, come into my heart. Be my Savior. Change my life. He will change your life. It will be so unrecognizable. People will think you're lying when you tell them your life previous to Christ. They'll think you're lying. What do you mean you struggle with anger or addictions or anxiety or lying and cheating or whatever it was and then when you met Christ, he changed you completely? You mean you don't do that anymore? It'll be remarkable. So if you made that decision today, I want to pray for you. Please let me know in the comments below. And for those of you guys who always watch these videos, thank you. Share this video. People need to be inspired by the Word of God. We need to be moving towards the gifts that God has called us to move into. So that we are bringing glory to Jesus Christ's name. So if that is you today if you feel this nudge in your heart as the regular followers of this ministry i am beckoning you to heed the voice of god today step into that place step into that calling that he has for you <clears throat> the calling that's without repentance I also want to encourage you to share this video come and follow me on facebook youtube instagram me we and I'm going to leave the link down below if you want to support this ministry. You can become a partner financially. You can become a prayer partner. You can click on the link and purchase merchandise to support this ministry. And I'm just so grateful that you stopped to watch this video on purpose this day. I'll see you guys on my next video.